Now it will not come out. I'm pulling on it. That's why you have to disengage this little thing right here. When you disengage it, then the tape will pull out. Hello there, Robert John Hadfield here from Audio Mover. Got kind of an interesting repair we're gonna do today. We got this in the studio just a few days ago and we get a lot of this kind of thing where people have tapes that they wanna get digitized but they're also severely damaged like this and then we need to go ahead and, and obviously fix it for them. And so, fixing videotape, this is a videotape. This is what's known as a, there's actually a few different things this could be. This one's actually just an eight. So this is a format that was developed, I don't know, it was probably 30 some odd years ago or more. And there were, this particular size case, there were three different things that could have gone in this, this size case. There was eight, high eight, and digital eight. And they were all used, I believe Sony's the one that developed this format, I could be wrong about that, but uh, all three formats, 8, Hi8, and Digital 8, all were the exact same size case. So in this one, you can tell by what it says right down here what the point of it was. This is an 8. There is also, it'll say Hi8 if it's a Hi8, and it'll say, uh, actually it has a little I can't remember exactly how it is, but the icons, the logo is a little bit different if it's di digital eight. Now, it, these often get confused with people when we get phone calls because people call up and say, Can, do you do eight millimeter film? And what they really mean is this, where it's an eight millimeter tape. These are really common consumer grade videotapes back in, you know, what, like I said, this went on for quite a while. So the eight came out, which was, once again, just kind of a consumer grade. Well, all of them are consumer grade, but the the eight millimeter came out, and then not long after that, something called Hi Eight came out, which was slightly higher quality, and then and then a little bit after that, something called Digital Eight came out, and then that was one of the first times that we actually took digital and put it on videotape, and it was done on a format similar to this. Or once again, it was it was the exact same case. So what we're going to do is you'll see as I uh, looked at this, this tape is actually made by Maxell, and you'll see that what had happened is someone had played this, and then it obviously broke and then they just taped it together and sent it into us like this and we're going to be able to fix this without opening up, opening it up fortunately and it, it, because these are really tough to open and close again and it, it, we'll probably do a video of that sometime in the near future so that you can see what it's like to try to open these up they on the inside they're made a lot like a vhs tape and i'll show you i'll show you a couple things you need to know when you do this that that you can do from the outside that work just like a VHS tape. And you'll see a, a, a kind of like a cassette tape, there's four different spots that they have screws on the outside edges and then we'll run right there in the middle and that's how you would open this up. But the thing that's really similar to a VHS tape is this right here. So this little spot, if you've ever tried picking up a VHS tape, I don't know if I have one handy. I don't see one. If you ever try grabbing a VHS tape, oh, here's one, hang on. If you take a VHS tape and you try to turn the wheels, you'll notice that you can't get them to turn. They're, they're just totally stuck, and, and you know, that, which was unusual for people, especially if they'd been used to things like cassette tapes, because you can turn those freely with your fingers or with a traditionally pencil was kind of the idea. Well, what's happening is on the inside, and you can't see it, but right about here, there is a little, uh, and you can kind of see it on the outside. You see down in there how there's a, it looks like kind of sprockets on the edge of the white. Let me see if that's what, yeah, you can see that in the screen. Well, what that is, is it's actually grab, there's a, there's a little uh, mechanism that's that's kind of going like this on the inside and it's latching on every time one of those things turns it has it can latch on and it kind of moves into that space and holds it so it won't move well when you push play it disengages that and then that's what allows it to play freely well the, when you play when you hit play on a, a VHS tape what happens is that little hole if you've ever wondered what that's for 
that hole, when you push it down, that's what disengages. And you can see now I can turn, it's kind of hard to do it by hand like this, but you can see now I, you'll see that it's turning. I don't know if you saw that there, oh geez. <laughs> anyway, you can see they don't, they don't, they're kind of hard to turn, but let's see if I can actually do it with a pair of scissors a little easier. Watch this. Watch the other one, because you'll see it turning. See that? how it turned? Because I just disengaged it. And if I let that back up, you can no longer turn it, it's stuck. Anyway, so that's what this little port is for. Uh, this pushes up when the tape is played and it disengages that little mechanism that keeps these spools from turning. Well, this has the same mechanism in it. And it's right here. So in order to get the, what we need to do to splice this together is we want to get rid of all this kind of junky, this junky stuff. And we want to just get some nice, uh, some nice smooth parts to, to uh, that, that aren't so distorted and obviously get all the adhesive garbage all over it. So we want to pull the tape out a little bit and then splice it after that. Now the other thing that's a little challenging is that they have this cover and just like a VHS tape, this has to be, you'll notice that it, you can't just lift, that it doesn't lift up uh, like that. And VHS tapes have a cover like this too. Well, one of the things you have to do, and, and it helps if you kind of get it out of the way, because when you close it like this, you'll see what happens is it pinches and it damages, it can further damage the tape by bending it right there. So one of the first things we have to do to work on a tape is get that open. Well, the way you do it, there's a little switch right there see if you can, I'm going to see if I can close in on this and see it. It's right there. And you pull it back. See that? So you pull that back and then that disengages the, there, let me focus it down here now again so you can see it. Sorry, I don't have an autofocus lens on here. So once I move that down, pull that out of the way, then this will open freely like that. So generally, if I'm just doing a repair like this, I need to get this out of the way, this top part, so that we can work with the tape and, and not have it getting bent down in there. We just That's just not a, you know, once again, that can kind of d further damage the tape. So what I usually do, and I should have something right around here, is I just grab a little a little bit of tape. It's funny when I have these conversations and I'm talking about tape because I'm talking about the tape that you use to repair and we're also talking about the tape that's in the housing, in the shell. So I'm talking about just a piece of, I just grabbed some packing tape. I'm gonna move that back out. I'm gonna put that there and we're just gonna kind of just hold it open. See how I did that? I just want that out of the way. So I'm not, so it's not interfering with the work I'm about to do. So I just kind of tape this thing up. Okay. So now we have to get these, these ends. And you'll see right now, it will not come out. I'm pulling on it. That's why you have to disengage this little thing right here. When you disengage it, then the tape will pull out. See how that works? Now it's coming out easily. You'll see that the wheels are turning. Okay. And what we want to do is just have a clean, clean edges. Now, unfortunately, in a situation like this, you're going to have to sacrifice some of the tape. It's just the way it goes to get this to to get it back together. And and the other thing is this this repair is going to be similar to a cassette tape in that uh, the head that plays it on a cassette tape you know, comes from the outside and it plays this side of the tape. And it's the same thing with a videotape. The, the head that it rolls against, it touches this side of the tape, not the other side. Now, the reason I bring that up is because a a reel-to-reel -reel tape actually touches the inside of the tape. And so it is important that you know which side the head is reading so that you don't put the adhesive or whatever you use to repair it on the side that's gonna rub against the playhead. And the other thing that I'm also very careful with, the, the heads that do videotapes are totally, completely different technology than the kind that read an audio tape. And I, I can't remember, it's called helical scanning or something like that. I, I get that wrong every time. But if you've ever seen it, there's this mat, there's a big drum. It's like a big, uh, 
don't know how to explain it, it's a big wheel almost. And this tape gets kind of bent around this wheel, which spins and then it, it reads the tape. So that it actually comes in contact with quite a bit of it. And so whenever I'm, it's, it's a much more, much more sensitive type of technology. So whenever I play a videotape back after doing a repair like this, I usually don't let the repair go across the head. And what we're doing here in the studio is that, you know, somebody sent this in for us to digitize. And what we'll do is we'll do the repair. We will rewind it to the beginning. We will play, you know, we'll mark where the, the repair is. We'll play it up to that spot. We'll take the tape out. We'll manually move it forward with our fingers and then we'll put it back in and play after that spot. The, the, I really don't want in this case, in these videotapes, that repair touching that head. Uh, they're, once again, they're just way more sensitive and I'm, maybe I'm being a little extra paranoid, but that's, it, it's, like I said, it's a very different technology. And the, the kind of heads that read audio tape, it, it's different and they seem to be a bit more robust. They're different. And so I'm not so worried. You never want, you never want the adhesive touching any of these, you know, these surfaces at all. That's a, that would not be a good thing. And so you want to make sure that when you repair these, the adhesive is not exposed anywhere. And then, and, and we'll do our best to do that right now in case it ever does go across a playhead, but we're just going to try to avoid that anyway. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to chop off, just cut a little of this off right now so we can kind of work with, with this. And I just use just some basic, you know, scissors. And we're gonna pull it out again now. Pull, and once again, just wash your hands really good because similarly, like you don't want the adhesive touching the playheads. You don't want a bunch of oil off of your hands touching the playheads. So, and I've tried doing these things with gloves and whatever, and I, it, I just, <laughs> I can't get it, I can't get it to work. So I, I gave up on that a long time ago. So I just wash my hands really, really good. Make sure they're super clean when I start, you know, interacting or touching this tape. Do that with audio and video tapes. And I don't know, been doing this for a few decades and it's <laughs> not, everything seems to work and it seems to, it seems to work this way. I know you can, you used to be able to buy repair kits for all these things. And I've just, over the years, just found that just doing it this way just does it, you know, if you're a little steady with your hands and you can get the things to meet up pretty well, then you just don't have, uh, you don't need all that extra stuff. You can certainly buy them, nothing wrong with that, but we just were able to uh, do it this way here. So what I'm gonna do now is we've got these, we're gonna get the tape kind of uh, over the top of itself so we can cut a nice, um, we, want it, we want to have two edges that match up really well. Let me move this out so you can see it a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and we're gonna put it right over the top of itself. Like so, so it matches. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go along and I'm gonna cut a, just an angle like that. And so what we have is matching, matching angles. You'll see how those things will, will line up with each other now. Okay. So then what I do is I get a piece of tape and what I found that works really well, we actually found some packing tape. I can't remember the brand that's really extremely thin. I mean, it seems actually thinner than Scotch tape and I usually use that type of tape in a repair like this. And I, I make it, I, and I just make my own little, my own little pieces of tape to put uh, in the, in these places. And like I said, because we're never really gonna play it over the, uh, the actual head, this is slightly less critical the way we do this. So remember, I'm putting it on the back side. I didn't make the tape quite as big as the, or the, the adhesive that's holding them together quite as big as the tape, but like I said a minute ago, based on how we're doing this, it really isn't gonna make a big difference. And you line them up the best you can, and there you go. And then you have a repair. 
and that should play pretty well. It should work. It should go back into the housing uh, fairly smoothly, and and then we'll then this will work in one of the players. Yeah, there we go. So now we'll take the this adhesive off. It closes back up, covers up the covers it up. And then let's just do that again. We're gonna move this out of the way. And we're going to spin this. And then we're just kind of winding it on to that's out of focus. We're just winding this onto the spool. Anyway, that's the pencils do not work <laughs> in videotapes the way they used to work with cassette tapes. So sometimes that's the, you know, you just take a pair of scissors and open it up just slightly and then it kind of fits that space right there. And that's it. So it looks like their, their break happened about, if you can understand this, uh, this side starts empty and then the tape moves this direction, comes off this spool over into that one when you play it. And so it happened right near the end of the tape and, and it's hard to tell. It's possible that when they played this tape that it broke at this point and then there's nothing after it, after the repair. And so what we'll do, like I said a second ago, is we'll put it in a, t a player. Uh, we will mark the, the, the timestamp, we'll rewind it, and then we'll just monitor it so that a few feet before it gets to that spot where the repair is, we'll stop it so it doesn't go over the head. And then we will manually, you know, scoot it forward by hand, pass the repair, and then play the rest of the tape. And, and you know, it, as a result, you end up losing, you know, a few seconds, you know, 10 seconds of the tape or something like that in there. But, you know, it, it's a small price to pay to have your, to get it repaired and to get it working again. And we do these kind of, these kinds of repairs quite a bit. So, and if you have any old audio or video tapes that, they don't even have to be broken. If you just need to get them digitized, send them to us. We're, we, it's Audio Mover. We do, we do this all the time. We digitize audio and video tapes all day, every day. We do projects for people all across the United States of America. We have, we've had a bunch of clients in Canada, amazingly enough. And, and we do, we do everything from bulk projects to, just single single items. We we've had as we've done as many as 115,000 tapes for one uh, for one client before. So and we and we also do thousands and thousands of people who just sent us one tape. So we have, and we, and everything in between. You know if you can imagine. So it's but uh, go to audiomover.com and that's where we. That's where we, uh, uh, where you can start an order. And, and if you have any questions, just give us a call. There's a phone number on there. A lot of times I'm the one answering the phone, but there might be other people that'll pick it up. And, and I think we have chat stuff on our, on our webpage too, where you can talk and ask questions if you have, because I know, I know with this type of media, this is really, it's very personal. And I don't know, you know, really who sent this tape to us. I can't remember where it came from, but uh, it's part of a project. I'll just go put it back with the rest of the tapes. This person sent in about five or six videotapes, and this one just happened to be broken. But I, what we do know is that these things are really important to you, especially when we get things from, you know, personal things. We know that this stuff is has your memories on it, has your family. In some cases, it has people that have died and gone, and, and you know, this is all you have. So we're real, you know, we take this very seriously. This business was built out of a labor of love, and there's a whole backstory to why I started this business about 20 years ago, but we've been doing this for a long time. We've helped, I, I can't, I don't even know how many people at this point. It's, it's enormous. The number of tapes that have moved through our, our studio over the last couple of decades is unbelievable. But we're, you know, we do this all the time and we're happy to help and I'm happy to get on the phone with you and chat about what you have and what you're trying to accomplish and make sure we can get you what you need. Anyway, and please like and follow this channel. Like the channel, er, like the video, and if you have any comments, throw them down there. Throw them down there and we'll, we monitor that stuff fairly closely. 
and we'll uh, see if we can respond to your questions and what have you. So anyway, with that, have a fantastic day.